Hello everyone. This is going to be the second interview in our YouTube series um, for alternative wellness. And we are speaking with Sharon Cat. Is that correct? That is correct. And um, this lady has done some extraordinary things. Um, I did a little bit of research on her. And um, she, her studio has been voted for the last three years. Uh, best yoga studio in Houston. And I can attest to that because I just went to one of her classes and it was beautiful. Just, wow, I can't even, words don't even come to me about how good it was. Um, uh, she was also featured in the Houston Chronicle um, and they called this the center that heals the body and the spirit. <clears throat> um, she offers many, many things that can help you um, heal your body and your mind um, and I thought uh, one of the reviews that I read about your studio um, kind of struck me and I thought people would like to hear it and the person said she opened my eyes to how nature gave us what we need how processed our food has become and how lessons from Ayurveda can be incorporated into the Western world yeah. So I think that um, just walking into your studio and seeing how beautiful it is um, can um, just this this person encompassed everything that you offer. Okay. Um, first off, I'd like to start off with um, a little bit of background about yourself, um, where you came from. Right. So I grew up in India in a small little town called Pune. P-U-N-E, that is where my teacher, I met my teacher Ayinga over there. I was about five years old and he introduced uh, yoga to us as part of our physical education. Mm. And about two and a half years after that he came to the West and he introduced yoga to the West. Oh, nice. So we grew up doing yoga not thinking it was anything fantastic, it was just part of our daily living. So I grew up over there and um, then I married and I traveled the world with my husband. I have two beautiful boys. Um, and uh, one's working with NASA and one's doing his own business. So we have the whole family around about here. My husband's an engineer and um, he uh, supports me with everything I do. So this is kind of a family run business. He helps me when he gets back from work. And I love that I don't have to work for a living. I love that I can play and share this knowledge <laughs> with people. So I arrive every day and do the best I can. And now we've been in the U.S. for a long time, uh, 20 odd years. We lived in Ohio for a while and we moved to Texas. I came kicking and screaming. <laughs> but I have to say, I love it over here. Every one of my medicinal plants can grow really well with this mm -hmm. weather. Sure. And as long as I'm indoors um, in the afternoon, I'm okay. It's beautiful under the trees outside. Mm -hmm. So we have this beautiful um, three acre property with a lot of trees and we grow all our medicines over here. And it is beautiful, gorgeous. Yeah. I, I had a chance to walk around the property and, um, you know, just luscious with, yeah. with green yeah. um, and just very inviting. Yeah, so we practice Ayurveda and all our medicines are out there and they're free for people that come uh, for consultation. There are a few herbs that we don't have that we buy, we buy and the, those are bottled so they mm -hmm. can purchase that. And in addition to Ayurveda and yoga, we offer massage, mm -hmm. Chinese medicine, acupuncture, uh, Reiki, uh, color therapy, sound therapy. We offer everything to heal people and we have lots of rocks and minerals mm -hmm. that also balance the energetic uh, imbalances in the body. So. so yoga, you mentioned how you were taught yoga from a small child. Um, where did um, Ayurveda medicine, is that what it's called, yes. uh, come into your life? Well, see, uh, in the West we look at yoga a little bit differently than in the East. Uh, in the East, where I grew up in India, you don't practice yoga until you understand the basics of Ayurveda. Because mm -hmm. Ayurveda is a simple description, it is the science of life. We mm -hmm. look at how nature lives and what happens in the seasons, what happens to the planetary movement, to everything there's a time and season. And we just put ourselves into that circadian rhythm and we go with that flow. So when we teach yoga, the same thing applies. We look at a human being, every individual human being, if you have 20 people in your class, you look at them 
and you understand where the imbalance lies in this human being and then you create a class that can heal them body mind and soul so most of our sufferings are very similar we just express them differently. Mm -hmm. So when you're trained in Ayurveda, then you can be a fantastic yoga teacher because you understand psychologically, emotionally, and physically, and spiritually what is going on with another human being. And so you can give them something that they really need. Nice. And I felt that in your class. I'm so glad that you came <laughs> to our class. And I, I, I felt almost as if you were just speaking to me. Correct. And that is what everybody says when they leave the class is, did you do the class just for me? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes. <laughs> That's so great. Um, if you get a chance, please come and check out her studio. It is um, a joy. It's definitely a joy. Um, I wanted to ask, was there one person, you said you had a teacher that came to you, um, in your life, um, what was, um... BKS Iyengar from Pune. Oh, okay, from okay, Pune. great. That was, uh, my yoga instructor's, um, who Teacher. he taught from. Yes. Um, do you feel like, um, being from India, um, that this, uh, allows you to, um, not just teach yoga better because that's where it comes from, but you feel like people look at you differently because of that. I'm not sure that people look at me differently because of that. But what I do appreciate is that I have this understanding. It's always difficult when you have to learn something that's not from your culture. It's like learning another language mm -hmm. and you got to learn, you got to dedicate a lot of time, but then you get only the nuances. You don't learn the local linguistic uh, expressions. Mm -hmm. Yoga is much like that. Uh, in the West, we have this obsession with the body, and we have this obsession with how we look, and we have this obsession with organizing the body in a certain form so that it fits this picture-perfect expression of the pose. And in India, we don't grow up with that. We wear the most simple cotton clothing so that the body can breathe, and so there's no restriction. Uh, generally, and this may have changed since the many years that I have left India, but this is how I grew up. Mm -hmm. We wore cotton clothes or silk clothes so that the body could express itself, could breathe, could release the toxins through the yoga asana. And so when I bring that to our practice over here, I teach from that aspect as to be as natural as you can, to breathe through it, not to be obsessed with the body but to be cognizant of your breath because really yoga is about that union of your breath. It's, it's the hinge pin that makes your practice perfect. So we in our studio practice it a little bit differently. We are not like the other studios where you have a huge amount of people that are doing a set plan of yoga or we're going to do you know this expression of one, two and three. Uh, yoga asana. Ours is different every day because you are different every day. Mm -hmm. Your mood is different every day. Your body condition is different every day. So none of our teachers come in with a set plan. They come in and they gauge what the student needs and then they do it. So I feel in that sense our classes are always different and they always bring the genuine aspect into uh, the student's life so that they can enhance it. So in that way it is very very different. It is the Indian aspect of doing yoga, not the western more physical expression of yoga asana. Right, and I hear that a lot um, just talking with people right. um, who are coming into yoga yeah. um, and it's a, it's like a brush of fresh air to yeah. hear you say that because yeah. I try to take that aspect, and when I'm teaching Correct. classes too, um, there are so many different subgenres yes. of yoga, and uh, I, I believe people are confused as to what is for them. And I, uh, I feel like you um, have created a version that can fit everyone. Correct, because all yoga is really one. You know, when the ego is involved in it, then we give a title to it. Mm -hmm. My teacher used to say, please don't say you are doing Iyengar yoga because there is only Hatha yoga. Mm -hmm. And when you practice Hatha yoga to tone the body, then it becomes a more rigorous practice. But when you do it for the mind and the soul and the spirit, we call the same thing Raja yoga. Mm -hmm. When you do the same poses in a flow and you rep repeat it because you have X condition and you need to move X toxin out of your body, mm -hmm. we create for you a certain pattern of pose and we call that flow vinyasa mm -hmm. and of course people call ashtanga yoga ashtanga yoga but there is no such real thing as ashtanga yoga because 
all yoga is supposed to remember the eight limbs of yoga which is ashtanga mm -hmm. you are bound by that you are supposed to follow the eight limbs of yoga regardless of what you are doing mm -hmm. so our teacher taught us that we should just call yoga yoga it's Love not it. Tommy yoga Peter yoga Jenny <laughs> yoga Tom yoga whatever it is it is just yoga Thank you. you Thank see? you for that. And every level is welcome. As long as you can breathe through the practice, you are doing it well. It's not to break your soul. The first principle is ahimsa, non-violence. Mm -hmm. So when you can practice your yoga in your body with peace, sthira, sukham, asanam, strength and ease in the pose, you are honoring your body. You're practicing kindness to yourself. You're not judging yourself badly. And you're not forcing your body into painful situations and that is really what practice makes perfect means mm -hmm. is learning to love yourself mm -hmm. and to be healthy through that love it's a good relationship mm -hmm. yeah. wow that's that's exactly how i feel about it Wonderful. Um, i'm yeah. glad you're sharing it yeah here yeah <laughs> especially yeah. <laughs> i don't have to go to india to get this <laughs> oh no and this is a misconception that people have they have this glorified vision of india and they think i'm going to india and i'm going to somehow change my life mm -hmm. and all change happens within us so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether you go to india to timbuktu to anywhere else you are your own guru when you are cognizant of your own limits and you are aware of showing up every day and working on them, you become your own teacher. Mm -hmm. And so that is important for people to be empowered. We don't need to be worshipping anybody, but we need to be cognizant of our own power. And that is really what yoga is. It brings you to that level of awareness where you see the divine reflected in you. Mm -hmm. I see that a lot, people looking outside themselves. Correct trying to find an answer or a magic pill and it's not there. There isn't anything like that. It's a commercial thing. The more you look on the outside, the more products you will buy, the more dreams you will chase, and the more times you will crash, and the more times you will ask somebody to pick you up. But when you go within and you learn to love yourself unconditionally and not follow this norm of expected behavior, expected shape, expected size, expected anything, mm -hmm. then you arrive every day and you're happy, excited to see yourself, and that is the best place to be. Excellent. Um, I'd like you to, um, you mentioned before a lot of the things that you offer here at your center. Um, if you could go again over them and sure. just a brief description of what each of them are. Yes, certainly. So we are the Houston Yoga and Ayurvedic Wellness Center. So we do offer yoga. We offer all types of yoga for all bodies, all ages, all conditions. Uh, and we have classes in the morning, the afternoon, and the evening. Also on the weekdays, we have a yoga teacher training program, which is fantastic. Uh, we have now IAYT and a Yoga Alliance certification, so we will be doing 200, 300, and 500 hours. So we learn in this program not just the yoga asanas, not just the poses, but the physiological, psychological, emotional effects of every movement. In addition to that, we learn Sanskrit and we learn how each sound has a specific meaning and a specific vibration within your body. We are vibrational beings and when we know to say those things correctly, we begin to unlock and balance then the vibrations in the body. And we also learn how those are related to the planetary movements. Anybody that studies yoga and Ayurveda needs to know Vedic astrology. Mm -hmm. To everything there's a time and season. In the summer season you have different effect on your body, different foods, and likewise with the winter and the spring. And so likewise we need to learn what is causing you to have this effect in your body. What is it that you are here as a human being to unlock? So we go deep into the philosophy, the Samkhya philosophy. We learn physiology, anatomy, we learn marma. Marmas are the energy centers of your body. When you do a pose, what is happening in your body? Where is the pressure on that part of the body? And what is that point regulating in the tissues of your body? A good yoga teacher should know so that when she sees somebody visually, she knows, okay, this pose is going to benefit this person who's got prediabetes or has got cancer, and this is what I should do in the yoga asana so we can oxygenate the tissue better. So there's a lot of things we learn in it according to the yoga some care philosophy we learn about the reason for living we learn about your journey and we learn how we can change that so we learn a lot of wonderful things in yoga teacher training mm -hmm. 
And then we have Ayurveda. Ayurveda is this beautiful science of life where we learn how easy it is for a human being to recover their health, how to stop doing the things that are causing you to be sick in the first place. Mm -hmm. So we educate you. It's a two and a half hour appointment. You come in for an initial and we educate you about your body and how different you are from other people and how simple it is to use your food as your medicine. A lot of people say you are what you eat. Mm. But I say you are what you digest. Mm. Because you can eat a lot of good things and it can just come out and not do anything for you <laughs> if you combine it incorrectly, right? Mm -hmm. It's chemistry. So we teach you how to combine correctly the foods uh, for your body condition so that you optimize the nutrition that you are absorbing in your body. Mm -hmm. So Ayurveda is great. We use Ayurveda and it's very easy. We use it for ADD, ADHD. We use it for high blood pressure, for diabetes, for cancer mm -hmm. treatments. We use it for everything across the board. Now, uh, granted that some people are in very advanced stages, so we can just offer palliative treatments right. for them. But 9 out of 10 people are searching to be healthy and they are so willing to come in and learn about this stuff and it doesn't take a much much of an effort to be healthy mm -hmm. you just have to know what to do and what not to do right. so I highly recommend the Ayurvedic consultations and we have great success with that we also offer pancha karma pancha karma pancha means five karma means actions okay. we do the five actions of detox wherein if you've had a chemical reaction or a physiological reaction to something in your life that has created a chemical deposit in your tissues and your tissues remember this insult or this injury you continue to live it you can do psychotherapy whatever but you still have the stuff inside mm -hmm. it and so we have 35 days where we flush your body out we don't do the five day the 10 day because we need the whole body the whole body to be healed so it is a long process but it's amazing you literally clean out all the junk from your body and you're a brand new person you lose weight and your weight is really about your body storing toxins in fat tissue. Some people are generally meant to be skinny or slender. Some people are naturally muscular and some people are naturally nice and soft mm -hmm. and have abundant tissue. And when we understand that our bodies are made differently, we don't reject our bodies. We begin to enhance whatever we are created with so that we can optimize our tissues. Mm -hmm. That is Panchakarma, the five actions of detox. So if someone were, um you would suggest this for someone who was trying to have a fresh start yes or maybe someone who's coming off of addiction or something yes uh, definitely or a major sickness or even for some people they've had a very tough childhood oh okay and on the outside they look really great they've been running jogging doing their special diets but they don't feel fulfilled on the inside mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what you have on the outside. If you're not content on the inside, you're not healthy. Mm -hmm. And so we have people that will come just because they want peace of mind. They feel this immense battle going on in their head. And they're doing everything they humanly can according to their information. We just put that information into proper context for their bodies. Mm -hmm. And we remove the excess stuff that they have accumulated through the ignorance of their intelligence. Mm -hmm. And so once they have unlocked this power, they are now able to apply these principles of Ayurveda to cleaning the body tissues out and we help them with body treatments over mm -hmm. here and there's a lot that they will do themselves. Mm -hmm. But it's very easy for people that are working for example in Houston to come. We have people that come from all over the world. They mm -hmm. actually live with us. We have an entire suite where they can stay with us. Oh. Uh, we put them up in neighboring uh, you know, accommodations if they need to. Hotels work with us as mm -hmm. well. And so we have this ability to offer Panchakarma to really transform your life. You you know, it doesn't matter what you have, it's how you enjoy it, mm -hmm. right? So, <clears throat> excuse me, Panchakarma is great for that reason. And then we offer acupuncture, the Chinese medicine, we offer different types of massage, uh, we offer Reiki, we offer color therapy because we all are vibrationally responding to the light from the universe. Mm. You see, the seven rainbow colors affect our chakras as well in the body. And we have so many chakras in the body, but the seven major ones is what the Westerners know. Mm -hmm. And so we have a light therapy where uh, we put precious stones on the bottom and then we put the other stones on top of you. And then we have the, accordingly, we have lights that we will shine on those stones and so we feel those vibrations through the body so we have made very many uh, treatments that we mm -hmm. offer in addition we offer training for uh, diet for weight loss we also have cooking classes mm -hmm. we have um, 
many educational um, courses that we offer over here on a regular basis. Every month we offer something. We have a newsletter and you can definitely sign up for it by going on to our website www.houston-yoga-ayurveda.com and you can see what we're doing. We invite people for music therapy, crystal bowls. Last night we had a didgeridoo healing concert and it was mm. amazing. Mm. So we have all of these things that we bring. It's always different. We always invite people for past life regression. Anything that the customer needs to address, we offer it for them over here. We also have organic gardening, mm. and so we have a community that gets together and does that as well. We have walking meditations. Uh, we offer free meditations in the morning on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and Wednesday evening uh, as well. So that's something if you're interested in mm. to calm the mind. Not everything has to cost money. The other thing that we do that's very unique to our yoga studio is that we have a big barter and exchange program. A lot of human beings are in a bad place right now. Mm -hmm. They don't have money, <laughs> they've lost jobs, uh, or they simply just don't have enough finances to fund uh, their treat treatments, and so we do a barter and exchange as well. Nice. Yeah. So many good things you, you can yeah, give. <laughs> we love it. It's a, it we're, going, we're in the process of making this into an ashram. And so once we have that, we'll have all the Vedic studies. We have Vedic astrology as well, starting in September. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whatever you want. If you want to study Ayurveda, you can come and study that with us. If you want to study Vedic astrology, we're here. If you want to study yoga teacher training, we're here. So come and find us. We're just amazing. <laughs> of course, you are... Um are you the only teacher that teaches this, or do you have other teachers that share? No, you said you had some yo other yoga instructors. Yes. Um, but for some of the other modalities that you do, are there um, some... Yes, I have. I practice the Ayurveda and the yoga part. I do teach mm -hmm. a couple of times during the week, um, yoga. I have very many yoga teachers that most of them are trained by me, so we have them over here as well. Uh, we do have a Chinese uh, medicine practitioner and she comes here. We have other massage therapists as well. We have European facials as well over here. So we have that therapist over here as well. Uh, we have different sound musicians uh, that come and practice sound healing as well over here. So we have a whole a, a whole village over here that mm -hmm. supports you. It's its own community. We have our tribe of healers over here. And so we have people from all parts of the world. We are like a United Nations right <laughs> over here. We have people from every corner of the world uh, coming to our classes, offering different uh, treatments, educating us. Uh, so yes, it's not just me. I couldn't do this on my own. I have an amazing <laughs> staff. At the front desk, you have Firi. She is my right hand, and she does amazing work. I couldn't um, pull this off without my entire crew over here. She was very welcoming this morning. She is very amazing, <laughs> yes. We have lovely, lovely people here. Um, so you explained all the modalities. Um, let me see. As far as we talked about how you came into it, to yoga, um, was there a, a well you said uh, Ayurveda was a part of life correct, in India so correct. you didn't specifically train it was just the way things were the way you grew up that was life. exactly right as I grew up my neighbor was an Ayurvedic Vaidya that's the word for an Ayurvedic physician okay. and so I watched them deliver their babies and do stuff mm -hmm. so for me it was just everyday stuff mm -hmm. and um, I worked corporate and I worked for a cardiologist and I applied these principles over there but it didn't fulfill me because I was conflicted about uh, you know this medicine that we were giving them the chemical medicines that mm -hmm. were really just creating customers to come back and not really healing them right. and so that is when I decided that I had a bigger calling in life I needed to put my knowledge to some use mm -hmm. and so I quit my job and I went back to school and studied full-time and graduated from the California College of Ayurveda mm -hmm. uh, in Ayurveda and I studied with many, many teachers, Dr. Vasant La, Dr. Svoboda, Dr. David Frawley, and I have been an eternal student, so I'm still studying. I mm. still am just scratching the surface, but whatever little bit I know, 
uh, we have used in this amazing place to transform lives. Mm -hmm. And so Ayurveda is really my passion. Mm -hmm. I love plants. Mm -hmm. um, you can leave me in the middle of a forest and I'll be quite happy <laughs> over there if I never saw another human being. So yoga and Ayurveda have been my calling ever since I can remember. And it fulfills me deeply. And so I went back to college just to bring this mm -hmm. knowledge out to people and to show them, you know what, you are powerful human beings. You don't need to depend on anybody making your medicine. You just have to identify it because the universe provides you everything you need. Mm -hmm. We have this small mind that says, I can only have this much, when the universe is saying, remove that boundary. Use what you want. Everything you need, I've created for you. Mm -hmm. But we have this ignorance of the intelligence mm -hmm. where we don't recognize what is food and what is not or how to combine it and that's where I like to come in and say okay here let me show you mm -hmm. how easy it can be stop mm -hmm. struggling enjoy your life mm -hmm. yeah it definitely shines through you I can see it in your I love eyes it. it's just I love you're it. the light <laughs> I love it yes um if I were um in search in search of something I'm searching for myself I'm depressed um, I just need help and I called you and I said Sharon yes. I need help yes I well, have those calls every day <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell me well the first thing I do is I acknowledge that this human being has taken a tremendous amount of courage to call me a total stranger and say hey I'm having this issue mm -hmm. so I always give them some time over the phone I will talk to them no matter how busy I am my appointments are very informal I have appointments within appointments mm -hmm. I may be sitting with you but I receive a call and some days in crises I will answer that call and I always disclose this to people and they're very open I've never had anybody that says oh you're taking five minutes out of my two mm -hmm. and a half hours of consultation I will just extend the consultation mm -hmm. but the first thing I would do is acknowledge that this human being has an issue that they need addressed and they have come to me and so over the phone I'll give them the assistance that I need to give them but I will always leave them with two important things over the phone I will teach them how to breathe because everybody needs to breathe when you're depressed mm -hmm. When you're faced with anxiety, your breathing pattern changes. And then I will teach them very simple things like, for example, if you're depressed, if you're anxious or you're having a panic attack, the most simple thing that you can do is to find this finger of yours, your index finger over here. The hands are a depiction of all the elements of the earth. So this is ether. This is your spirit finger. Your index finger is your air or your vata finger. This middle finger we consider as the pitta finger and this here is the earth and the water finger. And so this is what people panic about. So we find the pulse at the bottom of this finger and we just gently hold it like that. And you can try it. Mm -hmm. Just hold it and close your eyes and feel the pulse. You'll begin to feel it here and you breathe into that pulse. And very soon your body will begin to relax. They begin to feel so peaceful and loved and appreciated. And this works across the board. It doesn't matter where you are. You're sitting in public. You're at home. You can't sleep at night. You're upset with your family. You've lost your job. All of those things we can't change on the outside, but we can change how we react to it. How do you feel? I feel good. Isn't that I'm amazing? already relaxed from the yoga class before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it works really well it because you can calming. feel the pulse on the inside of that finger mm -hmm. and it takes you to a place where you didn't have any stress before in your mm -hmm. life and so it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So we have many ways. So I invite them to just come over and have a cup of tea with us. We always mm -hmm. have green organic tea here. Or I have people that come in and they just will sit down and read a book, they lie in the hammock outside or lie in the sun on the grass because ours is fully organic where the mm -hmm. only yoga and Ayurvedic studio that I am aware of that is fully off grid. We have solar panels for power, yes. we have septic and we have well water and it's just an amazing thing. It's fully organic, we don't use any pesticides here. So our clients will come in when they panic and just lie around on mm -hmm. the grass and mm -hmm. earth, ground themselves, <laughs> you see? So it's 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 a community home really. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would do if somebody called me. I would invite them over and say, "Come on over, come, make this your new home. This mm -hmm. is your safe space mm -hmm. where you can be who you have to be." So. Hmm. And I noticed chickens. We have chickens. <laughs> so we have chickens. We had peacocks. We lost our two peacocks. We had a oh. giant snake get in and eat it. So we were very very sad to lose them. But as always, we look at the finer things in life. We recognize that everything has to die. Mm -hmm. And um, it had a good life while it lived with us. And mm -hmm. yes, we have lots of chickens. We have organic eggs. And they 
actually our pest control. They eat mm. all the bugs. Mm. So we love that. Mm -hmm. yes. I tried to meet them earlier. They didn't They're like very them. friendly. The babies are a little bit uh, nervous at the moment because mm -hmm. they lost their uh, their uh, roommates. Mm -hmm. uh, but the bigger chickens, they will come to you and greet you. They love uh, mm -hmm. coming to sit on your lap. You can pick, uh, pick them up and pet them. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you like uh, different colored eggs, you're welcome to come and get some. So. <laughs> If there are some available, it's yeah. So, it's so great. Very peaceful outside. Yes. Um, and do you do some outside... Well, no, it's mosquitoes are pretty bad right now. Right now, now we have a lot of... Because of the recent rains, we mm -hmm. have uh, Harris County coming in to uh, help us with that. And uh, so we don't do outside yoga right now. But when the weather is great, we have a really big deck out back there. And we love to do yoga mm -hmm. out there. Even in the middle of summer, if it's 105 degrees out, it's cool under there because it's surrounded by medicinal plants and trees and they keep the mosquitoes away mm -hmm. over there. So we do that and sometimes we do yoga just out on the grass, under the trees. Mm -hmm. And we love to be outside. We do walking meditations as well. We have a little pond with uh, koi fish and sometimes mm -hmm. we do meditations around that as well. Do you have any um, big events that's coming up that you yeah. like to let everybody know about? Yes, we have a yoga teacher training program coming in in December. That's great. And we have a drumming circle for the solstices that we will have. Mm -hmm. So uh, stay in touch. Get online. Look at what we have. Every month we have something great coming in. Uh, so we work with uh, big hotels. We, they bring people to us and we go to them. Uh, we have yoga teacher training in different studios. So if you're mm -hmm. looking to learn the real Ayurveda and yoga connection through your practice, you're welcome to invite us over. We will come and expand your program for you as well. So we have lots of things that happen over here. If you could um, just tell everyone one healthy thing that they can do daily or something that can get them started um, working towards better health, what would that be? I would say wake up before the sun and do breathing exercises. And breathing exercises are not difficult. Just put one hand on your chest, one on your belly, and breathe into that belly like a little balloon back and forth, loving yourself. That would be the one thing I would say, do it, because when you wake up after the sun rises, you change your whole chemistry. Mm -hmm. And you can manage that pretty easily by sleeping early. Sleep mm -hmm. by 10 o'clock and wake up before the sun, mm -hmm. your life will be different, I <laughs> promise you. Um, let me see, is it, tell me what your daily ritual is. My personal daily ritual, mm -hmm. um, I have this amazing family, I live, if I drive like a crazy woman, I'm <laughs> home in five minutes, if I follow the road rules, it takes me seven minutes, and sometimes I forget that I don't own the road, so I'm reminded of that <laughs> quite often. So when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is I wake up, and I eliminate, I uh, rinse my mouth out and I drink uh, a cup of water. Uh, because I have a lot of pitta and I'm very active intellectually, I drink my water out of a silver cup. Some people mm -hmm. will drink it out of a copper cup if they need to. So I drink my water and then I meditate. I do my meditation, I do my personal practice and then I um, go about doing the usual things a housewife does, a mother does. I prepare the meals for the day, breakfast and lunch for my family. And then I go either for a bicycle ride or a walk. So I get my 35 minutes of sun. Mm -hmm. I need my vitamin D. And um, I massage my body with oils. And then when I'm back from my walk, I take a shower and uh, then get ready for work and I'm here. Then I teach a yoga class or I see clients. I uh, cook lunch over here. Uh, by the way, if you're ever hungry and you're in the area, we <laughs> always have lunch at the Houston Yoga and Ayurvedic Wellness Center. It's all organic, the vegetarian, of course. And then I'm here till the evening. I teach a class, perhaps. And I do my meditation in the evening as 